So now we're going to look at the distributional approximation. Now there's only one approximation in A-level statistics, which is the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Okay, so that's where we have a binomial distribution, but we are using a normal distribution to approximate it. Now we have a few things that we need in order to make it justifiable for us to use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And that is that n really should be more than 20 and np should be 10 or more. Now, the twist is when we're approximating a discrete distribution with the normal distribution, we have to apply what is called the continuity correction. Now, this is because if we think about what our binomial distribution looks like, so our binomial distribution is set values. And if we think that we are trying to then place a normal distribution curve over that, remembering that the normal distribution curve is continuous and therefore cannot equal any one of these values, we then have to make it so that our binomial values are actually more like rectangles. And what this does is it gives our discrete values, our whole number of values, width so that then we can actually find the areas because remember that the normal distribution is always about the area underneath the curve. So if we say that this is uh, the bar that represents let's say the number 10, this one is for the number 11, this one is for the number 12, 13 and 14 and so on, that means that the bar that is being used to represent the number 10 would actually be going from 9.5 up to 10.5. The bar that is representing 11 will go from that 10.5 up to 11.5. Then the bar that's representing 12 will start at 11.5 and go up to 12.5 and so on for the bar representing 13 and the bar representing 14. So we have to take into account what's going to happen when we have these different symbols here. So if we have a strict inequality, so for instance the probability that x is strictly less than 11, if we have a look at what we have here, strictly less than 11 means 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 going off the end of the screen. So I don't want to actually include the bar that is representing 11. So I'm going to start at 10.5. So that would be starting from here and then moving downwards. So it's not actually including that value there. So that, using the continuity correction, is going to be x is less than or equal to 10.5. If we have a less than or equal to, so if instead of being less than 11, we had less than or equal to 11, then that would be including the bar that represented 11 and going downwards. So that means that then the highest value that I have is the 11.5. So that means that we'd be looking at the probability that x is less than or equal to 11.5. If we have the probability that x is just equal to 11, so that is just looking at the bar that is representing 11, that starts at 10.5 and ends at 11.5, so that would be the probability that x is less than, sorry, because it's a normal distribution, we don't have to do it that way. So we're going to have the probability that 10.5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 11.5. For greater than or equal to, again, if we stick with our value of 11, so if we're looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 11, that means that I want to have 11, 12, 13, 
14, 15, 16, all the way going up. Which means the smallest value that I want this time is 10.5. So I'm looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10.5. If it's a strictly greater than, so the probability that x is more than 11, then I don't want to include the bar that's for 11. Strictly more than 11 would be 12, 13 and 14, which means the smallest value this time would be the 11.5 again. So that's going to be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 11.5. So it does take an extra step of thinking about to think about which what these symbols are meaning in terms of what we actually put into our calculator. Remember that if we are having to do a hypothesis test with this, we will always be starting off with either less than or equal to or we will be starting off with greater than or equal to. So these are the two that are most important for people to remember. So we have an example here, not a hypothesis test, but just looking for some probabilities where we're having to use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So we have the probability that a subject taking part in a clinical trial with 600 subjects will withdraw before the trial is complete is 0.14 and is independent of whether subjects withdraw or not. Use a suitable approximation. So it's not actually telling us use the normal, appro normal approximation to the binomial distribution. It's just saying a suitable approximation. And this is why it was really important that I pointed out earlier on that the only approximation that we have is the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So if we're looking for 85 or more withdrawing, we would originally be looking at x being greater than or equal to 85. So then we're having to think about our continuity correction here, which means that we'd actually be looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 84.5, similar to this one here. Now, if we have a look at where we would be putting this in our calculator, because it's the normal approximation, we're going to go into normal and we're going to go into NCD. And I'm still missing some bits of information, which is my mean and standard deviation. Remember, though, when we were covering the binomial distribution, we talked about how we could figure these out from our distribution of the binomial. So if we think about what distribution we're starting off with, x squiggle b, we have 600 subjects and we have a probability that they withdraw of 0.14. So if I'm then trying to find the mean, that would be doing np, which is our 600 times 0 0.4, 0.14, sorry. So back into our normal calculator part, 600 times 0.14 gives us 84. If we have a look at our variance, which is n p 1 minus p, so that's going to be 600 times 0.14 times 0.86. Well, I've already done my 600 times 0.14, so I just need to times that by 0.86. So that gives me 72.24. Remember, though, when I put that into my calculator, if I go back into my stats function, distribution, we're doing the normal approximation, we need to go into NCD. When I'm putting my standard deviation into here, I'm going to have to square root my variance. So it's going to actually be the square root of 72.24 that I type into my calculator here. The mean is 84. And we're looking at it being greater than or equal to 84.5. So my lower, my lowest value is 84.5. And the biggest value is just going to be a really large positive number. So 
So that gives me the probability of 0.477 to three significant figures. So I'm just going to give you a second now to try the now you try one. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and given the now you try a go. So here we've got Mushtak who is organises a raffle uh, at a fundraising event for Oxfam. The probability that a person has to buy a ticket is 0.96. Find, using the normal approximation if appropriate, the probability that when he asks 60 people, that they all will agree. So, we're starting off with X squiggle B, 60 people, the probability that any one of them agrees is 0 0.96. I'm wanting them all to agree, so I'm actually looking for the probability that x equals 60. Not less than or equal to 60, not greater than or equal to 60, but that all of them will agree. So I need exactly 60 of them to agree to buy a ticket. Now, just as before, thinking back to our different ways that we change these, this is going to change to having a look at the probability that we're between 59.5 and 60.5. Just as we did before, we need to find our mean, which is done using NP, which this time is 60 times 0.96. So back into my normal calculator part, 60 times 0.96 gives me 57.6. For the variance, we're going to have NP1 minus P, which is going to be 60 times 0.96 times 0.04 and again I've already got my 60 times 0.96 in my calculator so I just need to times that by 0.04 which gives me 2.304 so remember that we need to go back into our statistics part distribution normal NCD this time my lower is going to be 59 0.5. My upper is going to be 60.5. My standard deviation, remember it's the square root of our variance, which was 2.304. And the mean is 57.6. There we go, and we get our answer, which is 0 0.0773 to 3 significant figures. Now we have when Mushtak asks 190 people, so this time our N has changed, we're asking 190 people, we're wanting 180 or more agreeing to buy them. So, where we're looking at the probability that x is greater than or equal to 180, because it's 180 or more. If it was just more than 180, then this would be a strict inequality here. So, that means that we would change that to be the probability that x is greater than or equal to 179.5. And we're starting off with the binomial distribution of n being 190, and the probability is still 0 0.96, which means that our mean is going to be 190 times 0 0.96. So 190 times 0 0.96, which gives us 182.4. For our variance, we're going to have NP1 minus P, which is 190 
times 0 0.96 times 0 0.04. And as before, we've already got the first bit typed into our calculator, so we just have to times that by the 0 0.04, which gives us 7.296. So back into the statistics part of our calculator, dist norm NCD. My lowest value is going to be 179.5. My upper value is just going to be a really big positive number. My standard deviation is the square root of my variance here, which is 7.296. And my mean is 182.4. Which gives us not 0.859. So we've had a look now at how we can use the normal approximation to a binomial distribution.